So Swift comes in with a question about solid state drives and whether to use multiple or one. And it says, I recently bought a two terabyte M.2 Samsung Evo 970 Plus for 250. Does it make more sense to run separate uh, SSD for boot and programs or dedicated everything to one drive? Well, as with most things in life, it depends. But in general, uh, it sounds like a bigger deal than it really is. If you've got a high performance drive, which you most certainly do, you have one of the best uh, Gen 3 NVMe drives that has ever been made and frankly will ever been made because Gen 4 and pretty soon Gen 5 drives are coming. That's a great drive. With a two terabyte drive, me, I would put Windows on it. I would put my most frequently used programs on it and I wouldn't worry about it. Now, I do think that people on their boot drive especially need to plan to leave 10 to 20% of free space. Don't ever try to fill that, fill that thing up completely, ideally 20%. Now, 20% on a two terabyte drive is 400 gigs. And I'm sure a lot of people go, I don't want to leave 400 gigs free. Well, SSDs suffer something called write amplification, yeah. where as they get full, it gets harder and harder for the SSD to manage the available data because the blocks are used up. There's actually a lot of really complex stuff that happens in the background on SSDs. The when you delete a file off an SSD, it doesn't actually delete the data. It simply marks it in the allocation table as unavailable. There's something called a trim command, which basically goes in and does garbage collection and cleans up the, the, the blocks. On a hard drive, you can just write data over existing data. So let's say you, you write out a track of data mm -hmm. and then you want to write a new file and, the, and you've deleted the data. Now, on a hard drive, they do the same thing. When you delete a file, it doesn't write zeros to the drive. It just marks it in the file allocation table, or actually NTFS in this case with Windows 10. It just marks them as free. But the data is still physically on the drive. Right. When you write a new file, if the, um, if the operating system wants to write to those same sectors, mm -hmm. it just writes directly over them. The drive doesn't care. But an SSD doesn't work that way. When you write to an SSD, it has to do a read erase, write, three passes. I... Because here's the trick, a SSD cannot write individual bits. It can only write blocks. And when you write data, you're often writing partial blocks because the, um, the drive is cut up into smaller sectors then the, the blocks might be 4K in size, some are larger, mm -hmm. whereas the drive is broken down to 512K, uh, 512 byte sectors on the, file, on, the, um, on the operating system's drive map. So the operating system maps the drive differently than the drive does. That's right. what your controller and the DRAM buffer and the SLC cache, that all comes in to make it work well. What happens is if a set of blocks has to be, has to be overwritten, but only a few bytes, if you update one byte in that block, the controller has to read all the data in the block. It then has to change whatever data that you changed, even if it's just one letter, mm -hmm. and then it has to write the entire block back. It cannot update a single bit of data without writing the entire block in one go. Now, SLC caching plus the DRAM mask all of this. And this is why TLC drives, where you overrun their, and this is why QLC drives especially, if you overrun their SLC cache, true write performance drops um, on, for example, a Intel 660P. Now it has a SLC cache and it has a DRAM buffer, and it's actually really quick, so long as you don't overrun in writes the SLC cache. If you do, its actual raw write performance is slower than most hard drives. It's actually down like 60 to 80 megabytes a second, whereas many modern hard drives will do 200 megabytes a second. Megabytes? Yes, megs. 60? 60 megs. <laughs> but its SLC cache can do a gigabyte a second. As long as you don't overrun it. Right, and that buffer masks the slow underlying NAND. It's why we have such cheap drives. As the drive fills, many drives have a dynamic SLC cache that shrinks. The SLC cache, now the Samsung drives are really, really good. They, they're much better at this than say a 660p. But the, the cache on a two terabyte 660p is like over a hundred gigs when the drive is fairly empty, but it can shrink down to just 20 or 30 gigs when the drive is 90% full. Mm. And so it's very easy to overrun it. And furthermore, because the drive likes to write to open clean sectors, then 
as the drive gets full, it has fewer contiguous empty blocks to write to. And in order to write new data, it has to do a read, erase, and verify. Uh, I mentioned how it had to read yeah. and then had to rewrite. Twice. But see, it actually has to zero them first. Oh. So once it reads the data from that track, it doesn't actually write back to that track. And here's why. Before it can write to NAND, it has to write the zeros. It has to actually write a zero track. If it did that and then you lost power, you'd lose your data. And so what the SSD actually does is it reads it, yeah. makes a modification, and then it does a write in a section of the drive that is already zeroed. And then it goes back and marks the other sector as unused. This is why the NAND mapping has absolutely positively nothing to do with how Windows sees your drive. Uh -huh. the, the data is written in completely random locations relative to your, this is why you can't defrag an SSD. It, it doesn't, physically doesn't work that way. But, but in the background, the drive's controller will take those old dirty sections mm -hmm. when, it's, when it's idle and we'll go back and write zeros to them to clean them off. If the drive is almost full, there's no spare zeros and it performance hmm. can drop by more than 60% because it has, it has no choice but to do it in real time rather than doing background garbage collection. Yep. But it gets worse than that. Oh, NAND this. does not hold the charge permanently. It is not like writing data to a hard drive. Leave it alone for a couple of years and the data just goes away. NAND's not actually permanent. And so the drive keeps track of when it has written to the cells. Yep. And so as long as the drive is powered, in the background, it does a very slow process. If you've got data on an SSD that's been sitting for a while, when the drive is idle, it'll go, it's been long enough. It'll read it, write it somewhere else, and then zero those out. If you fill a drive 50% full, mm -hmm. leave it powered on, and do nothing with the drive for a couple of years, the drive write will actually slowly increase because it's always doing a little bit, because that it's refreshing the NAND cells because the NAND cells actually physically hold a charge, yeah. but they leak over time. Mm -hmm. Hence, Backblaze linked in the video description below. Yes, back up your data, seriously. But SSDs, as long as they're, the real danger is taking an SSD and putting it on the shelf for a few years. No, most will actually do pretty well. You'll probably maybe have your data, but like Windows 10 doesn't have any um, error correcting built into its file system. So even if you read the file, data may have been lost with bit rot and you don't know it because bit unfortunately, because bits flip yeah, 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 and yeah. get lost <laughs> and Windows 10 does not have an error correcting. Doesn't have an anti-bit rot thing going on? Linux does, oh. but Windows doesn't. Linux has a much better file system than Windows. Windows file system is old and needs to be replaced badly. Um, you know the uh, file system we have on our Synology NAS? Yes. The BTRFS? Yes. Uh, it actually, once a month, it actually does a read and verify of every byte written to all the drives, and it has error correcting code built into it. So even though it's a RAID array, even though it's a RAID 5 array with parity, mm -hmm. in addition to the RAID 5 parity, the file system has parity built into it. So the file system has error correcting code, so small errors can be fixed without even going to the RAID array. Oh, that's good. It's a much better file system. Anyway, so to answer the question, which is we got way off track, but hopefully that was informative and educational, um, it's okay to put your programs and Windows on the same drive. Just ideally leave 20% of it full for that background work. Now there's spare area beyond the, the, there's more than two terabytes of NAND on a two terabyte drive. Right. Samsung's pretty good about giving you a, a decent amount and it will use that as available, but it's better to give it an extra 10% because it, it just, the drive will last longer and performance will be better if you do that. So, and if you're at all concerned about it, get a second one, put it in your second M.2 slot and put programs over there.